Welcome back to our IB Chemistry video series. This is the first and final video in IB Chemistry Topic 6, Kinetics, where we will be looking at rate of reaction, activation energy, catalysts, and factors of rate. By this stage, you should be familiar with the concept of a reaction. The rate of reaction is simply the speed at which it occurs. It can either be thought of as the rate of increase in the concentration of products over time, or the rate of decrease in the concentration of reactants over time. Such concentrations are measured practically by recording either the rate at which a gas is produced, or the rate at which the mass of a reaction decreases, or the rate at which the reaction changes colour. Rate of reaction can therefore be measured in many units, including decimeters cubed per second and grams per second, but most commonly is measured in mole per decimeter cubed second. For your exam, you must learn to represent rate of reactions graphically. In these, the y-axis represents either volume, mass or concentration respectively, whilst the x-axis represents time. Commonly in the exam, you can be asked to calculate the rate of reaction from one of these graphs at a point in time. This is done by calculating the gradient of the line at that point in time. For straight line graphs, simply use change in y divided by change in x. This is commonly remembered using the phrase rise over run. However, for a curved line, draw a tangent at the point and calculate the gradient of this tangent using the same formula. It is worth highlighting that graphs observing reactants will show a negative gradient, and those measuring products will show a positive gradient, since they are recording a species that is disappearing and appearing respectively. So, a reaction rate can be represented using the reactants or product. But what occurs on a molecular level during a reaction? Particles move randomly in space and collide with one another frequently, but this doesn't always cause a reaction. For a reaction to occur successfully, the reactants must collide with one another with two main criteria being fulfilled. They must have the correct geometry and orientation, and sufficient energy. These two criteria frequently appear in questions. Learn them. It is also important for you to recognise that this sufficient energy is often referred to as activation energy. Let's look at it in some more detail. Activation energy is defined as the minimum energy required for two particles to successfully collide and produce a reaction. It is commonly represented on a reaction profile diagram, as introduced in our IB Chemistry Topic 5 video series. Remember, a curved line represents the reaction pathway between the products and reactants, drawn at different levels based on if the reaction is endo or exothermic. Then, enthalpy change is the difference in height between each level. Adding to our knowledge, activation energy is labelled as the difference in height between the peak of the pathway and the reactants. So, how is this activation energy reached? Well, the two particles must collide with sufficient kinetic energy. Remember from our Topic 1 video series that temperature in Kelvin is directly proportional to the average kinetic energy of particles. Therefore, temperature is directly proportional to the collision energy of the particles. And a rise of 10 Kelvin will cause reaction rate to double. These concepts are often visually represented using what is known as the Maxwell-Boltzmann distribution. This graph displays the number of particles and their kinetic energy at separate temperatures, indicated by distinct lines. The peak of each line represents the most likely kinetic energy of the particles at that temperature. In addition, activation energy is represented using a vertical dotted line. Practice drawing this graph, you can be asked to in the exam. When interpreting the distribution, all particles with kinetic energy to the right of the activation energy line are considered to have the required kinetic energy to meet the activation energy for a successful collision. These particles will therefore go on to participate in successful collisions and resulting reactions. Hopefully you can therefore appreciate that at higher temperatures there is a greater area under the curve to the right of activation energy i.e. more particles have a sufficient kinetic energy for successful collisions at higher temperature. This therefore explains the increase in reaction rate that occurs as temperature increases. 
To reinforce this, let's look at an example question. Which of the following four Maxwell-Boltzmann distributions for a series of reactions occurring at 50 degrees Celsius would occur with the quickest rate of reaction? As we know, the more particles have a kinetic energy greater than the activation energy, the faster a reaction will occur. So, we are looking for the diagram with the largest number of particles above the activation energy line, i.e. the largest area under the curve beyond this line. The answer is therefore B. Now that you understand how temperature can impact activation energy for a reaction, it is important to recognise how it is also affected by a catalyst. You've now reached the end of the preview for this IB Science video. If you want to check out the full video, head over to our website and select a membership plan today.